the economics profession worked over 50 years to obstruct and denigrate analyses of resource quality and environmental degradation, and still to this day advances policy proposals that are based on mythical reasoning and by and large ignorance of scientific engineering and human realities. Economics is not an all-encompassing discipline. Uh, one of the critical, critical things that is missing is the issue of ethics and morality, which one can say um, encompasses things like inequality, uh, fairness, uh, climate change, uh, and um, you know, equal opportunities, uh, etc. Now, if we're using pure economic theory and economic model of supply and demand uh, to make these decisions, these moral and ethical concerns, to give you just a few examples, will not be taken into account. And of course, that is not how society should operate. So do, what do we measure um, uh, when we say GDP? Um, do we measure peace? Do we measure stability? Uh, do we measure people can be poor and, and very happy? People can be poor and very happy. They, they, they basically, um, beyond a certain level, um, money loses value for some people. Not everybody wants to be a billionaire. All they want is to be able to eat, have good nutrition, have an education for their children, and they probably are going to spend more time on religion, on uh, thinking, on philosophy, on the arts, uh, than on um, basically hours and hours trying to earn more money that they're going to put in a bank. Our current uh, economic theory has a very limited view about what the economy is, right? what society is. So economists, they, they need to be capable of seeing the economy as more than just markets. Uh, the economy is embedded in society and therefore our profession should stop treating the economy as a separate entity and should start uh, situating the economy within broader issues such as you know, nature, environment, ethics. Uh, it does to the extent that it provides uh, uh, the sort of the grounding for some of the questions that need to be asked, uh, because these, these are not disconnected from uh, issues of production and consumption and profits and, and capital. Uh, but it's not all that is, right? So you cannot understand uh, the climate. And, and in particular, you cannot try to uh, force the uh, theoretical framework that is used for economic systems uh, into uh, uh, other disciplines and, and into the understanding of other type of phenomena. Things like climate change, things like uh, inequality, things like the environment, the role of technology, those are also part of the human experience. And I think the problem for economics has been, we have something very powerful to say about part of the human experience, but we've tended not to work with other part, other people that have things to say about other parts of the human experience. And I think economics is much more powerful as part of a, a you know, kind of, let's call it holistic or a more complete view of what we're trying to accomplish for people at the end of the day. That is changing and it's changing because the world has changed and it's also changing because economists have changed and they're beginning to realize the limitations of looking at the world in this way. We don't live in that world anymore. And in a sense, our, our economics has got to change and catch up with the world that we live in and the world that we're going to have to live in going forward. I have proposed that to make social justice compatible with environmental justice, we need to replace the stress on growth and redistribution with the stress on providing economic stability not prosperity, securing people's livelihoods, the essential supply. Then once people you know, feel more secure, they might be able to venture into you know, the risky experiment with a new type of production and even maybe with a new type of society, a post-capitalist society. But to think big, we need to have some basic economic security. As they say, you know, there is no free lunch. Everything has a cost. So, for instance, while having a, a, a completely fossil fuel free society may be in everyone's best interest in the long run, the economic cost of that goal may be too much for many people to bear. And in a democracy, in a free society, it's, it's not easy or perhaps even desirable to enforce 
um, the will of what may be right in the long term over what might be right uh, in the short term. Mm -hmm.